Hello, it's Joyful Catholic Hermit, and I'm just doing a little bit of an update. Um, I've been just trying to be very quiet. The pain has, of course, been very bad still, but I have days I can get up, do something for like an hour or two, and then just understand the next day I'm going to be laid out with too much pain. But you know, I'm adapting to that. I'm also adapting to um, letting go of the temporal Catholic uh, world in as far as parishes and being acceptable to um, uh, typical parishes. And um, the search for a pre-spiritual director or any, you know, spiritual director who would um, grasp a lot of the spiritual experiences that I've had all my life and as a mystic, Catholic mystic, um, that I, that doors just kept closing. So I decided, you know, to give uh, Jesus my full self as if, as if I have died in a way, died but yet alive. Let you know, observing the world and, and dead in various aspects to um, totally, totus to us, totally give myself to Jesus, to his real presence, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, to just guide me and tell me what they want. Because the other was just, you know, dead ends. And my 25th anniversary of my confirmation as a Catholic. It's going to be on Saturday, the Queenship of Mary, so day after tomorrow. And it just seemed like time to accept, adapt, and be fully open in a way as one who has died and is as if hovering on the other side. You know, uh, waiting for further instruction, I guess. It was very sweet. The uh, parish secretary had, had emailed, you know, um, it's I'm not leaving Catholicism. I guess you could uh, liken it to more that I have died. And, uh, you know, whatever is next after we die, um, we're not going to be going to parishes, so... But my mystical life, it got to the point of a practically a crisis pinnacle in which um, I, I would rather have died just to get away from the, the flashbacks and the 25 years of ups and downs, mostly the problem being is that the uh, clergy and most Catholic parishioners are not expecting, um, nor do they handle well, a mystic in their own time period. They're not expecting it. Um, I don't know what they have in mind, who the person would be like, but um, I finally had to accept also myself that this is my life, and there's so much more mystically that I haven't even begun to divulge. So it became practically like a cataclysmic experience within myself of accepting who I am and what I am. It's not my fault. I was born a mystic. And it's also not my fault that even though it's in the Catholic tradition, it seems extremely difficult for uh, Catholic clergy and parishioners to grapple with and accept, especially when some mystical experience becomes noticed, noticeable. It's practically like a fear of, of what will happen, you know, uh, you know, is this going to create scandal? Or, so they go into this ignoring, shunning mode of the person or other aspects. And it, it, 
I had to decide, am I going to let these other people kill me, essentially kill me, snuff out the life force in me? Or is that really up to God to do, to decide when he's going to remove me bodily from this earth permanently? And I decided I would just take a you know, big step back, um, pull the plug on myself, and not live like in shame that, that, that this is a horrible thing or, or um, a bother to people. There's this latest priest that I had, you know, had an appointment with who, uh, you know, disruption. You know, it's all so negative. And Jesus is love and mercy. So I, I'm trying this, and it... It worked pretty well until today I got this lovely email from the secretary at the parish. I'm no longer a member of the parish, technically, but she says, if you ever need anything, call me. You know, if you, I'm not sure if she remembers even what I look like. It's been a long time because of COVID and then my surgery. But um, I think she might. But I'd sent some of my cathartic emails to the priest, knowing he doesn't read them. But she wanted to let me know, and maybe he was frustrated with, because I write at length, if I, you know, I decided it's my survival now. It's my survival, get a lot of these things out, including my thoughts on the autocratic um, leadership style that has been probably since the Middle Ages, as far back as I can research, was when that uh, got in with the church because it was also its society then was autocratic with the feudal lords and the nobility and the serfs and the um, you know the poor uneducated so um, and the autocratic style has its points in some situations but generally it's not effective and not in a huge organization or a huge church like the Catholic Church has become worldwide so um, Anyway, and I think that that is a big frustration point for clergy and, and Catholic parishioners with a mystical experience in someone that, that the person, I certainly couldn't control it. I you know, had no clue it was going to start happening other than my angel indicated that it was going to show me to the stairway to heaven. But, I, you know, you don't know when you get visions and locutions. You, you don't automatically know what it means. It evolves over time. So, and But it's nothing that others can control either. And in an autocratic leadership style that has been passed down for centuries, um, the inability to control mystical, mystics and mystical experiences, I think that's at the root of the consternation. So... We had St. Pontian last week, Pope St. Pontian from the 3rd century, who uh, Hippolytus had, Hippolytus, or however you pronounce that, in the 3rd century, also had decided he was the Pope, but actually it was actually Pontian. But Hippolytus got a lot of people, um, you know, behind him, sort of like a coup, a takeover of the papacy for a bit. And um, Pontian realized that it was an ugly or um, no-win kind of a situation. He, he just removed himself. He just stepped aside. And in time, Hippolytus realized and, and also admitted that he was not the rightful pope. And he apologized, and I think Pontian might have been briefly then reinstated as the rightful pope. But this is an irony, and I find great humor in it. Not long after they got it worked out, um, both men were martyred. Their necks, their heads whopped off. So that's sort of the bottom line. I thought, Jesus is love and mercy. This is a beautiful life. My life is filled with so much physical suffering. Why be an occasion of sin for Catholic clergy and Catholic parishioners or myself going around like, you know, like something is my fault. 
uh, because I have this mystical ecstasy during Mass and other had other mystical experiences in the past that required taking some action. That wasn't anything I wanted to know about or get into, but morally I needed to follow through on the assignments God gave me. So um, this has been pretty good. I could say until this email today, which mostly it was to let me know that the priest doesn't read the emails. I already figured that out. But even just that, I decided I would just explain to her, and uh, I think I used the M word, mystic, in my email, and uh, it's sort of liberating. Maybe it's like someone coming out of a sexual closet or something, but uh, believe me, being a mystic is far worse, far worse. So um, it's okay once you're dead, I guess. That's that's the that's the thing. So we'll see what happens, but I had a little flutter of backflashes then just from that little bit of encounter. So I'm, I'm seeking whatever God wills for me and wants, maybe something in the long, along the lines of writing. We'll find out, or nothing. A prayer and loving God and enjoying the peace and accepting myself accepting others, adapting to the pain, increased pain and solitude, and um, adapting to knowing that sometimes it's the more Christian thing just to pull the plug on yourself and to remove yourself from the consternation of others that then becomes a consternation to myself or I mean, you can imagine when you go meet a priest to see about spiritual direction and you have to go through some of the things I, I mention of my mystical life. And, you know, it's, it's rare. It's a rare kind of a problem to have. So, uh, once again, I think I've mentioned it before. Um, it's nothing to want or wish for, frankly. Um, it's not an easy life being a mystic in the Catholic Church today. Um, and maybe it's better than it was in past centuries, so perhaps. I don't know, or if it's changed much. <clears throat> but, and it made it difficult when I, when I did leave the one diocese. At least I had a couple of people there in my spiritual da dying. I had a wonderful spiritual father for 24 years, and that was a miracle, because I had no clue as an early on Catholic 25 years ago, meeting this priest who then was, I think, about 72, and <clears throat> telling him things that I didn't realize weren't pretty commonplace in the church, you know, I kept thinking I was going to find a lot of other people with these things going on. And um, and he he just seemed to grasp. He himself didn't have experiences, but he he didn't judge me. It was a miracle. That is, I look back, even more a miracle. So, but he's passed on, and um, so God God is directing me. I've been very silent, but I've been healing. And I've been also in a better mode by um, doing the remove myself, as St. Pontian did. Um, that was an affirming holy day last week when it was Pope St. Pontian of the 3rd century. It was his, his feast day, <clears throat> some day last week. So I... It just made sense to me. I thought, here's a pope who had to do that, to just pull the plug on himself and let God figure it out. So anyway, it's my little update. God bless his real presence in all of you. Appreciate your prayers, praying for all souls.